I think when I came back to professional wrestling, fans immediately expected me to hunt for a title. I'm back because I want to work with that young talent that had the same passion that I had stamped out. You know, there for certain was this thought that, what if I just get starched right away? You know, what if I can't hang? Well, let's just talk about what it means for AEW to have CM Punk part of the roster first. It's always good to have a historical figure. It's always good to have somebody that has got a bunch of skins on the wall. They were so overjoyed that Punk was just back in pro wrestling. Here we are just seven months later, and now CM Punk is fighting for the AEW World Championship. To be something you've never been, you must be prepared to do things that you never dreamed you could do. And I've done that. Adam Page hasn't. We ask questions about how does it feel for AEW to have a man like CM Punk in the championship picture? Well, my question would be, what about the champion? I can't allow CM Punk to have the AEW World Championship because you can't have something that you don't respect. Punk doesn't respect, he doesn't appreciate all elite wrestling. For nearly a decade, he sat at home living the life of a comfortable millionaire while me, while Kenny, while the Bucks, while half of our early roster traveled the globe, filling arenas. We set out to change the world and damn it, we did it! I don't know if CM Punk would be Hangman Page's toughest opponent today. Self-doubt, I think anxiety, and I think with that in the back of his head, no matter who he'd be across the ring from, that would be his toughest opponent. He has turned back every challenge and some very physical confrontations with some of the best wrestlers in the entire world to retain the championship. He had to defeat Kenny Omega to get to this point. He's defeated Brian Daniels. How much better he can get. This is my home, and this Sunday at Double or Nothing, I will not be defending this championship against you. I will be defending all elite wrestling from you. I told him that I would annihilate him. I would destroy him. I would embarrass him. And did I stutter? Before I walked through the curtain for the first time in seven years, I asked myself a question, and that question was, can I still do this? You know, there's a difference between being happy here in AEW, being happy here being the champ. And I'm going to be the champ. I'll strap this whole place on my back, and I'll carry it to the promised land. At Double or Nothing, I will defend the AEW World Championship, not against CM Punk, but from him because I know what kind of place this could become with him at the top. He knows where Hangman is coming from. He's been there. I don't know if it's the same way on the other side. I don't know if Hangman has been where Punk has been. After a seven year layoff, I think CM Punk felt like he had a lot to prove, not just to himself and not just to CM Punk fans, but to AEW fans. Punk did not come to AEW just to draw big checks and big paydays and compete. He came here to be the best person on the roster. That is signified by who is the champion. You ask me if I win at double or nothing, and I will tell you when I win at double or nothing. No hyperbole, the biggest win of my career. Most important title I'm ever gonna win. It's the most important title that I'm ever gonna wrestle somebody for. And I respect Hangman, and Hangman's tough. Hangman's beaten people that I've never faced. Hangman's beaten people that have given me my biggest tests in professional wrestling. But it's my time. I don't care, just release it, just take the rest of me. He's hailed as the second coming, when he hasn't been the best of the world in 10 years, because I am. I am everything that All Elite Wrestling represents. I'm the lowly bullet club job guy who worked his way up when he couldn't find opportunities. He made them him damn self and became a world champion. And he's looking at Matt Buckshot Lariat. They've got an AEW champ. And I cannot let Punk have that championship. To wrap it up, the floor is yours. If there's any last words you want to get off your chest, 
Now's the time. I'm the best. The difference between the Thunder Rosa last year to the Thunder Rosa this year, one had a little more bruises and a little bit more marks, you know, that just like remind me of where I've been and the, the hell that I have to go through to be here today. And also you have somebody that is more confident and believes in herself. I want to be a fighting champion. You guys know me because I'm always fighting, because I'm always fighting for myself, I'm always fighting for others. I don't know what people say about Serena Deeb. What I know is that I'm building my legacy and I'm nowhere near done. And my goal is to leave this company, to leave this business, to leave everything better than I found it, this industry better than I found it. So what do people say about me? I mean, they can say whatever they want and I will still continue to build my legacy. Thunder Rosa wants to be a champion for the people. When the crowd gets hyped, she gets hyped. Serena and Thunder is a match where both feel they are prepared and set in position to rule the roost in AEW. I would say Serena Deeb does not want to see someone do better than her. Thunder Rosa is a good champion, and you'll find Serena Deeb is probably the toughest challenger that she has to face to date. My journey in pro wrestling started when I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school. I packed up my car, packed up my life, and I drove 10 hours to Louisville, Kentucky, and I started at Ohio Valley Wrestling. I know Serena D well. I was there when she first started wrestling. If I had a description of Serena D, I think that Serena D is the type of wrestler that the only validation that she'll have is if she wins. Winning is everything. I wrestled all over the world. Europe, Australia, Japan, Canada, all over the United States. You know what's funny, Serena? You and I were very similar. I mean, we both were told by forces outside of ourselves that we were never gonna make it. I never knew if I was gonna get the chance at a major company to, to wrestle how I want to wrestle. Perseverance has gotten me where I am today. I learned a level of work ethic that was unparalleled. Yeah. I learned levels. that to be the best, to take it to that next level, oh. you have to work harder than everybody else. That's exactly what I've done. Thunder Rosa and Serena D, they're both hyper competitive. They both want to win. They both want to be looked at as the woman that survived the ultimate fight. Not only are they the best here in AEW, they are the best beyond a shadow of a doubt. So I've taken my lows. I've learned from them. I've grown from them. They've made me who I am. They've made me what I am. And they have made me the number one contender for the AEW Women's World Championship. I can see. Thunder Rosa has fought long and hard to attain this AEW Women's World Championship. This is a family effort, and a lot of people don't understand that. All these people are proud of what I do. Every time I get in the ring, they're proud that I represent them and that I represent a whole entire culture. For my money, the two very best women in the world are going to compete on a massive stage in Las Vegas for the AEW Women's title. I want to be the best as much as I want to breathe. I shaved my head just to show how bad I wanted it, and I still got no respect. We're about to see two women that are real wrestlers. Of course I respect Thunder Rosa, but at Double or Nothing, the women's championship is on the line. So respect, respect goes out the window. I am not going to hold back at all. Thunder Rosa is coming, who comes with an army of people that believe in myself and believe that I am the best in the world. I'm walking into Vegas, and I'm walking into a fight. There's going to be one winner, and that's La Mera Mera. So I'll see you there, Serena.
Wardlow came in very much unknown to AEW. MJF was always looking for someone to watch his back, and Wardlow was there for him at every turn. I thought my opportunity with Max was my chance to finally free the wild animal from the circus. I was walking out of one cage and entering another. After years of giving, it is my turn to take, and I want it all. Wardlow is. You know, normally I'd have fun and I'd say a pig, but what I'm going to say is a scumbag. He's not a good person. You are my bodyguard. You don't work for AEW. You work for me. He's not a professional wrestler. He does not work for All Elite Wrestling. He never will work for All Elite Wrestling. He is a glorified security guard. Wardlow saw his association with MJF as a way to get a leg up here in AEW in very kind of turbulent times. When you become a, a prick and you're, a, and you're a prick to a big man that has pride, something has to give. I hope you're as intelligent as you claim to be and you release me from this BS contract. I will wash my hands of you and we could go our separate ways. I'm not the bully. I paid this man handsomely. I put a roof over him and his hick mom's head. How am I the bully? How am I the bully when I put food on his plate week after week after week? I paid him. If I'm being frank, I pay him more than he's worth. For months, Max has tried to run me out of the business. The man coming out to no music once again. Bring out the pig, and you all keep your mouth shut! For months, Max has tried to embarrass me. Now it's uh, Warlow being retrieved by the uh, security. For months, Max has tried to break me. When you slapped me, you decided your own fate. Well, what Max has discovered, none of those things are possible. I am letting everyone know all elite wrestling is officially Wardlow's world. I am going to embarrass Max. I am going to break Max to a point where he will no longer want to be in this business. I've treated him the way he's been acting, which is like an animal. Wardlow's chopping them all down. You want to act like an animal, I'll treat you like an animal. Wardlow's like a wild animal unleashed. You want to act like a grateful employee, then I'll treat you like a grateful employee. Unfortunately, Wardlow has not acted like a grateful employee in a very long time. Wardlow! We all have to come to a moment in life where we have to decide, are we going to help somebody and spend our lives accomplishing someone else's goals and dreams. And Wardlow locking eyes with CM Punk. That weapon wrist has a ring. Are we going to take that chance to fulfill our own? When Wardlow placed that dynamite diamond ring on the apron at Revolution, literally every single person watching thought, finally, MJF is, scared would be an understatement, MJF is frightened of Wardlow. He didn't move. He lost his composure. And he put every single obstacle in Wardlow's path. You ain't seeing the pay-per-view, boy! That he could think of. And Wardlow is not only so focused on getting his hands on MJF, but Wardlow is such a tremendous athlete, such a tremendous professional wrestler, that he was able to clear all of those obstacles. Wardlow just has one last step. Oh, man! Oh. And he's one powerbomb away on the chair! Oh, a man among men standing tall, but will he be standing tall this Sunday on pay-per-view? Now, finally, at double or nothing, MJF has nowhere left to run. MJF is crapping in his pants right now that Wardlow won the cage match and has this match coming up at double or nothing. I'm going to go with MJF winning the match. One-on-one, -on -one, man up, I don't think he can beat him. But he's got a plan, and who knows what that's going to be. That plan is going to help him win the match. God, I don't want to say this, but it will. I'm in a lot of pain. I'm in a lot of physical pain, and it's creating a lot of mental anger. And rather than feeling like I'm on top of the world, I've been feeling pretty beat down, but it was all worth it. Sunday, I will be in the T-Mobile Arena. Sunday, I will finally release every ounce of pain and anger onto the man that deserves it.
Since becoming TBS champion, Jade Cargill has been seemingly unstoppable. Sky's the limit for that. I mean, it's hard to put a number in and say that she'll win 40 in a row, 50 in a row, be undefeated uh, moving on. But she is as unstoppable as any athlete, male or female, in AEW. I think that winning has made Jade Cargill feel like there's nothing else. Nobody is undefeated forever, but I think that Jay Cargill is one that is going to put up a number that we're all going to appreciate years and years to come. Nobody can tell me who I am and what I stand for. I am Jade Cargill. I am one of one. Style, class, aura. I came here to dominate, to take names, to clean house. I'm not sure who there is in the women's division anywhere that could stop Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill isn't a physical phenomenon, but she's not nearly as good as she's going to be. Jade Cargill is not unbeatable. Far from it. And somewhere down the road, she's going to lose a big match. Is that in Las Vegas? They're not done here, guys. Statlander is in grave danger here. Wait oh, a second. Is that a Jade? And oh, a she just... She just beat up Sterling. She took his, she took his crush. crush. And Anna J evening the odds here tonight. Anna who? <laughs> Are we talking about the girl I already beat? Jade Cargill. You know, people didn't actually start caring or respecting you as a wrestler or a champion until you wrestled me on the main event of Rampage. You see, I did her a favor. I gave her prime time TV on my show, main event, and this is how she thanks me? I don't get all the extra BS, the lights, the TV time, the lawyer, the baddie section, but I don't need that. So maybe, in actuality, I'm that bitch. I beat that ass. And now she thinks that she deserves another chance at a match with me and this belt? As the old saying goes, you win more from losses than you do from victories. After my loss to you, Jade, I went out and I learned from some of the best women on this roster. Ruby, Sheeta, Chris Statlander. I think Anna Jay is smart enough and has a strong enough support system that she's going to be able to look at what went wrong in her first match with Jade. And she's going to be able to correct a lot of those things. I will hope that Anna Jay came prepared this time. Seeing that she can sit back and watch me dominate and clean house and beat everyone in this division one by one. Right now, I don't see anyone defeating Jade Cargill. She's close to unbeatable as anybody we have right now in AEW. So I see Jade Cargill successfully defending the TBS championship at double or nothing. It seems to me that the ground is set for an upset. That could happen. I have been learning from the best, and now I'm ready to be the best. I am ready to be the TBS champion. Double or nothing, you bet your ass you better bet on Jade, because I am nothing but money. I can see it in your eyes right now, and your opinion of yourself deep down inside is the same opinion that I have of you. You are nothing more than a loser. If you do, Manage to beat me, Chris Jericho. I swear to God, I will look you in the eye, I will shake your hand, and I will tell you that you have my utmost and ultimate respect. I was frustrated, I was angry, and I need to make it up to Eddie Kingston. Please come out here so I can shake your hand. 2.0, and Daniel Garcia swarming the ring, but here come the cavalry. Jericho just turned his back on his brothers in the inner circle. Why did I turn my back on Santana Ortiz? You should probably ask them the exact same question. Why did you turn your back on me, Santana Ortiz, and side with that piece of trash, Eddie Kingston? That's where it all started. And boom, the Jericho Appreciation Society is born and is now the most dominant and the best faction in all of sports entertainment. You know, there's an old saying that goes, never meet your idols. The first two years of the inner circle were some of the best times of our life. And then, you know, Christopher 
couldn't come to terms that we had other friends in the wrestling business, like Eddie Kingston. You might not care about Eddie Kingston, but we do. So tread carefully when you mention his name. Eddie made a comment last week that rings some truth. Maybe you are the reason why we're not the tag champs. You allow Eddie Kingston to plant a few seeds of doubt, and then suddenly, oh, it's Chris Jericho's fault that we're not champions in AW. Oh, it's Chris Jericho's fault that we don't have our own unicorn, blaming everything on me. Eddie, I'm blaming the destruction of the inner circle completely on you. No. Oh, 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 my God! Oh, my God! <sighs> just so you know, I was just asked, am I really a wizard? What do you think? Of course I'm an effing wizard! What do you mean? How does it change me? I was almost blinded! It's not a joke when you try to take a man's livelihood away. I'm gonna try to take his now. I wanna make sure his wife and his kids are crying at this show. You better leave this in. Understand something. I'm not responsible for your father not coming home the same. When that day of the pay-per-view comes, give your father a kiss goodbye. Give your husband a kiss goodbye, because he's not coming back the same. In this business, there are a lot of fake people, and there are people that are very what you see is what you get. I've known Eddie Kingston about as long as I've known anybody in this business and he's never changed. The good and the bad and the ugly of Eddie Kingston. So if nothing else, he's 100% real. I tried to stay out of it, and then he throws a fireball in his eye, and I know what that's like. Jericho tried to take my eye out, nearly did. Nobody else matters to Chris Jericho except for Chris Jericho. I've seen him at his worst, I've seen him at his best, but there's always an agenda, and I'm quite happy to be the person who orchestrates that agenda getting exposed. If you were to ask me who do I like more, Chris Jericho or Eddie Kingston, I'd have to say Chris Jericho. I got involved in this because I love the contrast. I got to the mountaintop of sports entertainment by being the best damn pro wrestler. We are not getting sucked into your little sports entertainment vortex, all right? Stadium Stampede was a different time. It's going to be you five douchebags versus us five. You can call it anarchy in the arena. Call it pro wrestling versus sports entertainment. All right. You want to fight? You want a gang warfare, no rules, anarchy in the arena? You can call it whatever the f you want because we're going to beat the shit out of you guys. We've been in every stadium stampede hell. We've created the damn match. We, we specialize in whooping ass up and down a building. Wow, you can use weapons where anything goes. The only thing I need to inflict violence are my hands and my feet. Chris Jericho calls himself a sports entertainer, and there's times when I've been a sports entertainer. But here in AEW, we are professional wrestlers. Digging your fingernails under the eye blitz of another guy. Breaking bones, breaking tendons, making somebody say I quit. Putting your opponent through pain. So the entertainment business, that's behind us. Now, it's time to fight. You used to talk about us bleeding like stuck pigs mocks. Come on, man, the tough guy act doesn't work with me. I'm the greatest sports entertainer of all time. Your tricks, your threats, your Blackpool Combat Club. You ever been to Blackpool? I have. You ever punched anybody out in Blackpool? I have. In the middle of a downtown cobblestone street in the rain. You're just a gimmick. You're just using names that sound good and look good on t-shirts. I'm the real deal, man. How much do we trust Moxley and Brian? That's a good question. We obviously have a history there. When we were a part of Jericho's in his circle, we, we went against Moxley. And now he seems to be our brother in arms, but if Eddie's good with him, I'm good with him. We're gonna beat all your asses. Why? Because none of us are lone wolves, dog. We're together. We are our brother's keeper. I think that people know what to expect from Jericho Appreciates Society. For over 10 weeks, the symbol of excellence in sports entertainment in AEW. It's a long time. It's pretty hard to have a legacy that long and stay on top as long as we have, and we're just getting started. Look in my eyes, Chris. I live behind my eyes. I can smell the fear coming off you. You bitch, I can smell it. When you say a hit in our world, you gotta be prepared to put someone in the ground. Guess what, Chris? We've done it before, and we'll put you guys in the ground too. Are you ready to do that? Are you prepared? Nah. The hit's irrelevant now. 
Now it's gonna be an assassination. And I'm just the man to do it. Over my brief AEW career, I have come so close, but never managed to obtain the victory. That would mean so much to me. And now I'm back here again in the finals of the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament, and I need this. Not only for me, for my career, but to do it when we are honoring one of the greatest wrestlers who's ever laced up a pair of boots. That makes it mean so much more. Ruby Scrappy. I think Ruby senses that people don't really appreciate her right now. I think she sees me as the mountain she needs to overcome to finally get the approval of the fans, to finally get the recognition she deserves. Ruby's very talented. Her and I, we go to war in the ring, but she couldn't beat me last time. Her first title match in All Elite Wrestling was with me. She couldn't do it. Did she do it again? Probably not. Rich Fulversell. And I think Ruby has the perfect scenario set up here to escape with a victory. Think of what it would mean for Ruby Soho to beat Britt Baker on this grand night on pay-per-view in Las Vegas. When I first got here, I was fortunate enough to gain an opportunity at the AEW Women's Championship, to which Britt Baker possessed. And to this day, that moment in Arthur Ashe Stadium, it haunts me. It's thunder enough! It's thunder enough to get into it! And Britt positioning Ruby oh. away from the ropes! Oh. The lockjaw! The end could be near! Oh, she's it's hit. over! It's over! The champion retains by submission. Well, if you weren't aware of who Ruby Soho is, if you're like me, you've got newfound respect for this young woman. It, it came down, JR, to too many people against her. I don't know if this is right to say this, but Britt Baker, you could call her my Achilles heel. She's the ghost that haunts me from that loss that day at Arthur Ashe Stadium. And the only way to get rid of that ghost is to finish this, is to finish that haunting, is to finish that annoying little voice in the back of my head. And it's to beat her at double or nothing. I think Ruby is coming into this match with extra motivation and extra edge. And I think Ruby Soho is gonna walk out of Las Vegas as the first ever winner of the Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. I am going to win the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament because there's nobody more determined in this division. There's no harder worker in this division. There is no other D-M-D. Britt Baker and Ruby Soho. Right now, I would say iconic figures in pro wrestling. We might get the match of the year. In the beginning of all this, I told Britt, as Owen once said, enough is enough. It's time for a change. But I wasn't talking about her. I was talking about me. I was talking about the way that I approach every single one of these matchups. Before, I was respectful and humble and happy to be here, but not anymore. I'm hungry. I've changed this mentality of just being happy to be here. Now, those moments are mine. I don't think there's anybody on this roster that is better fit to win the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament than myself. I'm sure Dr. Martha Hart would love to congratulate Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Successful women, you know, we kind of have a thing for recognizing other successful women. Ruby wins, I'm not gonna be totally shocked. But I'm not going to discount Ruby because Britt Baker's in it. Oh, the mighty Britt Baker, DMD. Get Shivani in here to do that. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, walks away with the Owen. And I'm going to tell you why. Since losing the world title to Thunder Rosa, she has been more focused than I've ever seen her before. As much as I think Ruby is a great athlete, I think Britt Baker's going to become the first ever women's champion of the Owen. Watching all of the competition. I feel like Owen would have been so proud to be able to see people do something in his honor, in his name. There was a time when, when, I, when you mentioned Owen's name that it brought tears to my eyes. 
Now when I hear his name, I think about this tournament. I think about him being honored by the men and women of AEW and everybody fighting as hard as they can to see who was going to hold that Owen Hart trophy. I feel like this is what I've wanted for a long time, is my brother to be honored, and, and he's being honored. We are sold out here in Las Vegas, Nevada for AEW's Double or Nothing for the first time in three years. We are back here in the fight capital of the world for Double or Nothing live on pay-per-view. I am Excalibur, joined by the legendary Tony Schiavone. And Tony, it is great to be back here in Vegas. It's been a number of years, Excalibur, but yes, we are back together, and what a card we got. And what a main event. Hangman Adam Page looks to defend his AEW World Championship from CM Punk. Tonight for the AEW Women's World Championship, Thunder Rosa will defend against Serena Deeb. Anarchy in the arena, the Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Blackpool Combat Club, Santana, Ortiz, and Eddie Kingston. AEW World Tag Team Championship in a three-way match. Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus against Swerve in Our Glory. Ricky Starks, Powerhouse Hobbs, and of course, it's the finals of the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. Adam Cole and Samoa Joe go one-on-one. -on -one. And we will see Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Ruby Soho vibe for the women's Owen. Wardlow finally gets his opportunity to get his hands on MJF. Plus, the TBS Championship and Jade Cargill's undefeated streak are on the line when she defends against Anna Jay. And a dream tag match. Fans have been wanting to see this for decades. The Elite against the Delete. The Young Bucks against the Hardys. A mixed trios tag team match. Sammy Guevara, Frankie Kazarian, and Ty Conti take on Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and the debuting Paige Van Zandt. And just signed at the very end, Darby Allen and Kyle O'Reilly will go one on one. Darby wants a retribution for what happened to Sting. And what about this? So much bad blood, so much animosity. The House of Black and Death Triangle. Let's take a look back at what led to this moment right now. In order for the house to be, I needed the masses to want it. And boy, did they want it. But they need to be reminded of what violence is in order for him to conjure it up. I was merely the lightning rod that guided the frustration of the masses. People who are sick and tired of a mundane savior. No, these people knew their salvation lied in a voice that guided their anger. And the house was that salvation. You fight fire with fire long enough, you start to realize that conflict is in the nature of man. So here came the hangman, the fool, the knight, the empress, and the hermit. And all I needed to prove is I could bring out the worst in a few. And well, when life is hard, be harder. And as for the rest, well, there's a saying that goes, we need only in cold blood act as if the thing in question were real, and it will become infallibly real. And it became so real to them that they created an executioner for me, a manifestation of judgment. I let you create the narrative for the house divide and conquer as julius caesar once said all of this is conjured up from the anger and hate that our audience has in them we are the subconscious prayer answered manifested in the form of three vengeful hollowed eyes entities with a thirst for creating a barren wasteland the age of heroes is dead. All hail the end. Cannot wait for a death triangle. 
and the House of Black to finally collide here tonight on Pay-Per-View. And you still have a chance to join us for Double or Nothing coming your way live at the top of the hour on Pay-Per-View, Bleacher Report, and Fight.TV internationally in four different languages, Tony. Absolutely, and also available in many movie theaters around the country as... Acclaimed in the guns, you know we so arousing. We the best pair since Hook and Dan Housen. On the mic, other guys sound terrible. I'll be spitting fire like the wizard Chris Jericho. So we light up your life. If Bowens wasn't hurt, we would win the titles tonight. Double or nothing. We about to smash, boys. Welcome to the show from Acclaimed and the Ass Boys. Society versus John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Santana, Ortiz, and Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston, who had these haunting words to say ahead of this match. I don't even know how long this has been going on with me and you, Chris, to the lost. I'm trying to drown my demons again, but they know how to swim, folks. I don't know how I'm going to act or what I'm going to do Sunday. I don't even know the rules of this. But what I do know is that you, Chris, have brought me back to a place that I don't want to be. You brought me back to a place where I'm drinking. You bring me back to a place where I'm not calling anybody. You brought me back to a place where I sit in a dark room and I just think bad thoughts. And then I start feeling like a kid again. And I feel like I don't deserve this. And I feel like things are not going my way. And then you burnt me, Chris. You scarred my face, Chris. I don't know where I'm at mentally. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do the match. I don't want to wrestle no more because I am scared. I am terrified of what I'm going to do to you. I'm terrified of what I'm going to do the rest of you. You guys don't understand. This is not funny to me. This is not a game to me. I hurt people. I've hurt people my whole life. And now you're bringing this back. You're bringing this demon back. Everything is, I'm losing everything because you are bringing this back. <laughs> Chris, I can't stand you because now I'm going back to what's comfortable. And what is comfortable is burying you in the ground. What is comfortable is hurting you. I dare you. I dare you to come Sunday and find out why for years I lived in fear of myself. Why I would see my mother bail me out of jail. Why no company ever wanted me. You're going to find out. 
And Tony Khan, this is also on you. Because you can stop this. You can help me not become this. I drink to drown my demons. But they know how to swim, Chris. I'll see you all Sunday. As I said, haunting words from Eddie Kicks and the Anarchy in the Arena match will be unlike anything we have ever seen. Plus, on Double or Nothing, we will determine who is the first winner of the Owen Hart Foundation Men's Tournament. Will it be Samoa Joe or Adam Cole? I think for a lot of younger fans, Owen Hart is somebody that kind of exists only in legend. I really think that if Owen was alive, he would really love the matchup in a tournament that has his name. I think for a very long time, and understandably so, the Hart family was skeptical of the pro wrestling business. I think AEW, we were lucky enough to provide Dr. Martha Hart and Oj and Athena the opportunity to bring Owen's name back into the pro wrestling discourse in a very big and a very respectful way. Well, it's a great source of pride for whomever wins this tournament. If you have any respect and admiration for the, the genesis and the foundation, the very fabric of pro wrestling. His loss in wrestling was tragic. There was no way that any of us could repay what Owen meant to the business. And I think by putting on a tournament in his name, having the the champion of both the men and women's win what we call the Owen. It was a great way to honor his name and honor his family. Being in the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Finals, it means a great deal. You hear people speak of Owen and his impact on their lives and what he was able to accomplish in the ring. The memories that fans have, you know, you realize he was such a special individual. And to uh, be able to be a part of something that represents his legacy, I consider it a great honor. O'Reilly goes out! O'Reilly's out. He's lost consciousness. Samoa Joe wins! The Owen Hart Foundation Memorial Tournament is without question one of the most prestigious, if not the most prestigious tournaments in all of professional wrestling. You got two guys that are being represented here, Samoa Joe and Adam Cole, that are absolutely off the page. Samoa Joe and Adam Cole, two unbelievable athletes, two great competitors, and equally as coveted as stars in pro wrestling. Now there's so much riding on this, a spot in the finals. What a counter by Cole! One doesn't deserve to be an Owen Hart Foundation tournament champion. One becomes an Owen Hart Foundation champion. That person that wins this tournament is going to be always known as the first winner of the Owen Hart Tournament. I could go on and on and on about why I should be the one to win this tournament. But my credentials, they speak for themselves. I have won world championship after world championship all over the globe. I have broken records all over the globe, and I'm going to break another one. Because a guy like me, a guy like Adam Cole, I fit the bill perfectly. I encompass everything that this tournament is all about, and that is greatness. And damn it, you're looking at greatness. Adam Cole's never faced anyone like Samoa Joe since his arrival in AEW. No one even close. Samoa Joe and Adam Cole are two of the top professional wrestlers in this sport today. They're two men that went through this grueling tournament. They are two men that did all the right things, and they're two men that in their careers have achieved great, great things. You know, do I believe my size advantage will play into my victory? Yes, that and every other advantage I have over him. I mean, when you look at us, compare us on paper, I'm more vicious than him, I hit harder than him, I'm stronger than him. But it's the variables with Adam Cole, things that are unperceived, his ability to shift momentum in his favor. The low blow was a difference maker, the boom put the exclamation point on it. That's where the real battle lies. I have beaten some of the biggest professional wrestlers on the planet. I have beaten some of the strongest professional wrestlers on the planet. And I think people forget how smart I am up here. Lowers the boom! Adam Cole! 
advance us to double or nothing! I will find a weakness. I will find a way to make sure Adam Cole has the advantage. And with a guy like Samoa Joe, it will be no different. When people ask me if I'm worried, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish will make themselves a presence in this match. I'm not worried. It's expected. Every time I walk out there, I expect a gang of people to be beating me. Because no man can be crazy enough to meet me on his own. One of the biggest son of a bitch I've ever seen. And Samoa Joe. Wait a second, Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt with a pipe in hand. If I had to pick a match of the night, or one match that I can't wait to see, it's this one. At the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Finals in Las Vegas, We'll see Adam Cole come to the realization that some things are inevitable, and those things include me. Adam Cole and Samoa Joe to crown the first ever Owen Hart Foundation Memorial Tournament winner. The first time these two stars, these two studs have ever clashed. And I can tell you exactly what I'm going to do in Vegas. I'm going to double down on myself because I haven't let myself down yet. And when I win this tournament, I will continue to go on and do bigger things and do better things. And the catalyst of all of that is this tournament. The Owen Hart Foundation tournament is everything to Adam Cole. This tournament is everything to AEW. And after I win this tournament, I can promise you Adam Cole Bay Bay is just getting started. Who will be the first? Will it be Adam Cole or Samoa Joe? You still have time to find out. AEW Double or Nothing coming your way at the top of the hour live on pay-per-view, Bleacher Report, and Fight.tv. And we are about to jump into the action here for our first match on the buy-in. And we welcome the human suplex machine, Taz, to the desk. Hey, man, I think it's time for a little uh, live wrestling here, a little tag team action, Shivani. Yeah, interesting in this matchup, Hook undefeated. Well, we've never seen him in a tag team match, Taz. This is true. First time for everything, brother. Yeah, <laughs> gotta have it something sooner or later, right? In your career. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Strong Island, New York, the team of Smart, Mark Sterling, and the premier athlete, Tony Nice. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God, Sterling. Oh, Lord. You see uh, Tony Nese with the Smart Mark Sterling crest on his premier athlete jacket. Tony Nese has a very, very impressive win-loss record here in AEW. Mark Sterling somewhat less so. Yeah, I, I would say so. And Tony Nese at 16-2, and two, ranked number five in the top five now. Mark, Mark Sterling likes to say that he is undefeated in the court of law, but we'll see how he fares against these two men here tonight. And their opponents first, from someplace far away, claiming to stand six feet, seven inches tall, and weigh over 300 pounds, he is very nice. Very evil, Dan Housen. And from St. Mark's Place, weighing 201 pounds, he is Hook. It is very, very clear that Las Vegas, Nevada loves that hook housing. <laughs> well, I, I go back to this once again, and we were, we were talking earlier, Taz, about his first tag team match. And really, it was kind of an uneasy alliance. He really was unsure of Dan Housen about being a partner. He finally accepted yeah. Dan as a partner. So it'd be very interesting to see how they work together, really. Well, he's always been a team player. It just sure. it takes a while for him to warm up to anyone especially even, even teammates so hopefully that works out well in this contest well i can see that because we say that dan housen is very nice 
but very evil. But it's also very odd. It's it's hard to wrap your head around him sometimes. And think about this guy in the ring. But Hook is very, very talented, undefeated inside the ring. But Tony, as you mentioned, this is his first ever tag team match. And Taz, you were somebody that kind of walked your own path for a long time and then found some success as a tag team as well, an unlikely tag team. Yeah, true. I appreciate you saying that, but you know, it's just it, however the stars align, you got to do what's in front of you. And I know Hook despises this guy, Neeks. And uh, seems like our live house here in Sin City is thinking of handsome devil. Tonight in our main event, Hangman Adam Page defends the AEW World Championship playing CM Punk. Double or nothing, the main event. You can buy it right now at Bleach Report. Use the QR code at the bottom of your screen. That was a very quick Kouchi Gary right there. Um, Tough takedown. You need to get control. I only think that's at the issue of this whole tag team. The problem that Nice has had about the attention that Hook has received here in AEW, but Hook's attention has been not only well documented, it's been well earned because of how tremendous he has been in a short span. Nice is very upset with that. Danhausen tagging himself in, looking to avenge that loss. Nice is cracking up. He's not taking that. Well, remember, he, as you point out, it's Calvin. Nice beat Danhausen real quick. And about 32 seconds, I do believe, and now Danhausen Dan head for the headlock here. Then. That's a side headlock. Nice immediately backs Danhausen into the rope. Shoulder tackle. Nice runs through Danhausen. Just better be careful. I know that Danhausen and Hook have been trained a little bit together. Right. Nice leapfrog there by the Danhausen. Uh oh. oh. Nice put on the brakes. And Danhausen able to avoid contact. Sure, it's a good quickness. Nice charges in. Got a little too ambitious a there. Too overzealous. You're right, Excalibur. And Danhausen fixing it. Curse him. Be careful. Be careful, Danhausen. Nice charges in. Danhausen gets the boot up. Nice once again spun out. Danhausen. All right. Well, he's not just a gimmick, brother. He can go. Oh, and Smart Mark Sterling tried to come in, and <laughs> but I think Smart Mark got got cursed. Oh, oh and Danhausen got trucked. Danhausen definitely trucked. Is the key word. This is not good, Shabani, for Danhausen. It's not good for Hook either. I mean, this would a loss here. I mean, would basically be the first blemish on Hook's impressive win-loss record. We have an announcement to make. We understand you've had problems getting on Bleach Report. We've been told that the Bleach Report app is now working up and working again. Thanks to everyone for their patience. You still have a chance to join us right at the top of the hour. On this is Sterling. I don't think they just ripped this guy. He better watch himself now. And you still have a chance to join us on pay-per-view and internationally on fight.tv do not you delay up under eight minutes before we go live with double or nothing at the top of the hour That's right right now definitely den houses in a lot of trouble because sterling and these they went back and forth with tags and they singled out dan in here i think uh tony knees believes he has identified the weak link on the team of Hook and Danhausen. Well, they have the experience advantage. They come into this thing with a game plan, which I respect that. But Nice is a cocky, arrogant SOB. Talented as hell. He's a premier athlete for sure, though. Now, Sterling, he's just a jabroni talent. Couldn't said it better myself, Taz. Smart Mark Sterling. As Danhausen up. Well, that's a pretty decent suplex. Well Not executed, well executed. We saw that in that video montage recently. Missed the leg drop that Nice was working on that with Sterling, I believe. But now Hook seems to want to get in this match real quick here. Wow. Can Dan Housen get there? Sterling immediately oh. tags out. Hook gets taken off the apron, though, by Tony Nice. I don't like that that happened, but it was definitely smart by Tony Nice. Yeah, Tony Nice, in, including being a physical specimen, a pretty high IQ. Nice. As a pro wrestler, and there's that hook housing training coming in. I told you. <laughs> oh, boy. Can Dan House get there? Dan Housen trying oh, to boy. The There he is. Oh, and he does. But, well, what's the smart marks there? They just dropped off the apron. Tony Nice. Oh, nice. Uchi Mata right there. Get on him. Oh, boy. <laughs> and the high collar, the throw, the overhead throw by Hookhausen. Front head and arm suplex. And oh, I Mark Sterling doesn't want to come in. No, no, he Sterling, he just patted Tony Nese on the back. Oh, okay. And Mike Posey said it was a tag. It was a tag. Oh, man. Either way, oh, it doesn't oh, oh, oh. 
Nice switch. Oh, wow, great standing switch. Look at the wide vertical oh, base. Wait a second. Oh, to, oh, to El Camino, El Camino right there. there by Hook. And now Smart Mark Sterling. Oh, but is going for a ride. Oh, oh, oh. That's a tough night in Vegas, buddy. <laughs> He's not getting right on your bean, baby. <laughs> I think Sterling might be Dunsky. And Hook now with an opportunity to end this match. To end. Uh oh, he just cut the throat. Wait, whoa, look. But Danhouse. Danhausen asking for the tag. And Hook may give him the tag. Yes, he's going to. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! There you go. Here are your winners, the team of Hook and Dan Housen. How about that Hook Housen team? That was very big. Dan Housen avenges the loss, and Hook remains perfect inside an AEW ring. And still to come tonight, Double or Nothing live on pay-per-view. Anarchy in the arena, the Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Black Bull Combat Club, Santana Ortiz and Eddie Kingston. AEW Women's World Title, Serena Dean will go up against the champ, Thunder Rosa. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus look to defend their AEW World Tag Team Championship against Swerve in our glory, and Ricky Starks and Powerhouse House in a three-way match. Adam Cole, Samoa Joe in the men's finals of the Owen. And in the women's finals, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, goes one-on-one -on -one with Ruby Soho. Jay Cargill defends the TBS Championship against Anna Jay tonight. Wardlow will finally get his chance to get his hands on Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, and Elite versus D-Elite, the Young Bucks versus the Hardys. First ever mixed trio smash, mid of the year, Paige Van Zandt against Sammy Guevara, Frankie Kazarian and Ty Conti. Darby Allen, Kyle O'Reilly go one on one. And we will also see Death Triangle against the House of Black. And in our main event, Pac-Man, Adam Page, CM Punk, the AEW World Championship hangs in the balance. I think when I came back to professional wrestling, fans immediately expected me to hunt for a title. We asked questions about how does it feel for, for AEW to have a man like CM Punk in the championship picture? Well, my question would be, what about the champion? I can't allow CM Punk to have the AEW World Championship because you can't have something that you don't respect. I will be defending all elite wrestling from you. He knows where Hangman is coming from. He's been there. I don't know if it's the same way on the other side. I told him that I would annihilate him. I would destroy him. I would embarrass him. And did I stutter? He came here to be the best person on the roster. That is signified by who is the champion. Now, I'm going to be the champ. I'll strap this whole place on my back, and I'll carry it to the promised land. At double or nothing, I will defend the AEW World Championship, not against CM Punk, but from him. Because I know what kind of place this could become with him at the top. From the first match ever at Double or Nothing 2019 to the main event this year, Hangman Adam Page looks to defend against CM Punk. Cannot wait for that one. You still have a chance to join us here tonight for Double or Nothing in just a few moments. Pay-per-view traditional providers on Bleach Report. I understand the app is back up and running and fight.tv internationally in four languages, Tony. Four languages. Four languages, Excalibur. Cannot wait. It's been years since we have had Double or Nothing back in its home in Las Vegas. It has been a tremendous week for all of us. But right now, to get this one started, let's go down to Justin Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Hall of Fame voice of wrestling, Jim Ross! <laughs> myself were lucky, lucky enough to call the first double or nothing in 2019 alongside Alex Marvez this year it is myself Excalibur Tony Schiavone and the Hall of Fame voice of pro wrestling Jim Ross on the assignment 
and you still have time to join us. Order right now for Double or Nothing coming your way in just 45 seconds. I don't think I've ever been so excited to call a pay-per-view as I am this one. From top to bottom, there's main events galore, but there's only one way to join us, Tony. Pay-per-view. We are smack dab sold out, like we said, for you fans wanting to watch us on the Bleacher Report app. It is now up and working, so you have no excuse. They have lined up to come in the building. Look, they're everywhere here, JR. Yeah, it's an it's a amazing crowd. Uh, sold out, as you mentioned, over 14,000 fans here. They've seen it all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a pay-per-view that if you don't buy, you will regret for a long, long time. Buy it on pay-per-view. We're coming up in a heartbeat.